Welcome to the Counter Offer. We are on episode number 27. 27. Second episode season of the two. second season. Yeah. We bring up two <clears throat> stories each that we don't know and we discuss it and we obviously talk about how the headlines sometimes don't match the actual articles. Mr. Bottomley, would you like to start it off? Well, this does match the uh, headline. Wow. Manhattan luxury real estate market heats up. Wall Street Journal. Rising stock market, fading recession fears, fuels sales to wealthy New Yorkers. Uh, the New York City residential market is gaining momentum after stumbling earlier in the year. Another sign that the pockets of U.S. housing markets are stirring to life despite high mortgage rates. Wow. Manhattan's most expensive homes, the most expensive homes, posted their second best June for contracts signed since at least 2006. I've noticed that. The yeah. last two well, that's weeks. all over the news. Yeah. Yeah, the last two weeks, you could feel it. It's There's just people that either have to sell or, you know, I think the biggest thing that's really going to force people to sell is their co-op allows a certain amount of time and they've maxed out that sublet amount of time. So it's going to force them to sell. Uh, you know, we were talking to one, she can't rent it anymore, so she's forced to sell. So it will be interesting what happens, but I do see more buyers. I definitely see more buyers. I don't think they're as hesitant. They don't want to pay the high rents. That's what I have to say about it. All right. The luxury market is taking off. That's for sure. Yes. Uh, surprised everybody. And that's also because you don't have to pay a mortgage rate. Yep, exactly. Number two, Miami and the Brazilian developers join to build $1 billion, $1 billion worth of apartments in five years. So the partnership is Brazilian developers are going to put three new projects anywhere between 300 to 450 apartments in each building. And the plan is to have four to 5,000 new apartments ready to lease. Miami's on fire. Uh, the comments actually were pretty good because they, this is actually from the Miami Herald. Uh, you subscribe there, right? <laughs> yeah. And the comments were very interesting. There's very little housing left in Miami and the rents are going up. So this is good for Miami. But they also brought up something very interesting is that you could see different cities have cyclicals like Pittsburgh had, it was it was thriving, then it went down, now it's coming up a little bit. Detroit was the same way. New York City, LA, you kind of go through the trends and right now the trend is Miami. Definitely. It is where people are going. Yeah, I'm almost tired of hearing about Florida, to be honest. <laughs> That's our last news article about Florida. <laughs> but to have 5,000 new apartments, it's amazing, to be honest. I, I would actually, on a map, love to see where they're developing this. So if you're, I'm not too familiar with Miami, but there's not a lot of land. Because it's literally the Everglades and then the ocean and then ever and then roads and you know it's. But well, the other interesting article about the uh, Florida is that the property insurance is so high. Yeah. So you really are paying up a lot. It's like triple, especially historically. Yeah. You know, uh, it's it's never ending though. Everybody wants to move to Florida. If it was between Florida and Texas, which were where would Florida, you Texas is too hot and arid, and I need a beach. Yeah, I think I'd. I don't need the gold. I don't know what I would do, honestly. <laughs> uh, during these, uh, this is the best article I have read on New York City real estate, probably in 2023. Wow. Well-priced inventory is low. New York real estate in Q2 2023. And there are so many little tidbits of quality information in here. You really could not pick. Uh, it is a great explanation of the entire market. One of the things that I found really interesting stood out. is how about this one? The issue of monthly payments slows buyers down. In recent years, as all pre-war and early post-war buildings near or move beyond their 100th birthdays, they need the need for ongoing maintenance has driven up maintenance prices, as well as the city's increasingly skeptical attitude towards abating taxes. At the same time, labor costs continue to rise. At this point, labor and taxes comprise well in excess of 50% of what a co-op and condo owner pays each month. And many maintenances are twice or two and a half times what they were a decade and a half ago. While condo carrying costs, stripped as they are now of tax abatements, can easily run $15,000, $18,000, or even $20,000 per month for a nice 2,000 square foot unit with good light, the increase in interest rates, of course, only exacerbates this issue. That actually is interesting, but they're talking about what a pain it is to renovate uh, a yeah. co-op because you actually have to, uh, with the summer seasonality of when you're able to do the renovations, because the co-ops have rules, they restrict. obviously. 
you need to- The time frame. Yeah, you renovate it. It could take three years, they said, is the average on how long it takes to do a renovation on a big unit. And that means you have to pay for where you're living now, pay for the maintenance and the mortgage on the new place, and pay for the renovation. So really interesting summary of the article uh, of the New York City market in this article. Read it. Thank you. I look forward <laughs> to that article immediately I'll after this. I'll see if you read it. <laughs> Do I have to subscribe? Yes. Do I have to pay for it? So there you go. No. It's I. It's what? Forbes? Forbes. Oh, wow. So they didn't use ChatGPT. No. That's good. No, this was definitely not a ChatGPT. This is a professional writer. That's good. Talking about professional writers, there are retail spaces that are vacant. That is what everyone's worried about, is the storefront of retail spaces. This is something that my mom brought up, ironically enough, and then that article popped up as something that I wanted to talk about, which is medical spaces. Hmm. Medical spaces, I was at my sister's in Brooklyn, and healthcare providers, this is what they're saying, healthcare providers' preference for retail spaces has put them in competition with brick and mortar and are triggering a race for premium spaces. So in other words, the city MDs and all of these other, like I was in Brooklyn, it was like specialized just for, you know, say joint pain. The other one was like uh, a, a private where you go in after you go through surgery. What is that called? Physical therapy. And, and even even at home in my small town, in at home, there's a physical therapist that was like a pizzeria before. So now <laughs> it's, 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 it's amazing how many go look in the street now of your town and look for medical spaces that are not like MDs, not doctors, but like you go there, it's quick, you don't have to go to the hospital and you don't have to go to your doctor. So they're popping up everywhere. And I, I think that is a new trend. Interesting. Yep. So those are the four articles. I have all the links below. Eric has all the links below. If you guys want us to comment on anything, send it over. Leave us a beautiful comment, a like, a share, subscribe. And we'll be back <laughs> next really week. Good. That rolled off the that, that, Those are Do your action items. Things. Yes. Uh, before next week, we'll be going live next week, and we miss you. Uh, next week, I'm sorry. Last week we were not live, but we'll come back for number 28 next All week. Right. Have a good day.